Good evening, Yorktown. This is Town Supervisor Matt Slater coming to you live from Town Hall. Uh, as you can see, I have my, my mask on. Uh, this is, uh, of course, the new mandate from the state of New York. Uh, as you, as I'm, and if, you, if you can pan out, Tom, uh, I'm joined by two guests. I'm very excited to have with me today Dr. Bianca Van Kust of the HRH care out of Peekskill, yes. uh, as well as the chamber president, Sergio Esposito. Uh, we are clearly uh, more, six feet, if not more, from each other. Uh, so I'm going to remove my mask because we are observing social distancing, and I want to make sure folks can hear what we have to say today. I want to thank everyone for joining us. We are starting a bit late today, and I want to apologize. I couldn't resist the temptation. I was invited by some of my former Yorktown High School teachers uh, to join a fun game of Kahoot with the 10th grade of Yorktown High School. Uh, I, had some, I had some help with some of those questions, thanks to Sergio uh, and Dr. Van Kust. Uh, we... Oh, there we go, that should work. Sorry, we had some technical difficulties on the audio. As I was saying, I just wanted to apologize for being late today. Uh, because we were playing a game of uh, Kahoot with uh, the 10th grade of the Yorktown High School uh, and really want to uh, thank uh, Mr. Altman and Mr. Lopez uh, for, the, for the kind invitation. It's always great to support uh, the students uh, and, and the high school that I graduated from. So today, again, uh, as I was saying earlier, joined, and I'm going to just repeat because there is no sound on uh, social media. That's my fault. I apologize. Uh, joined by two special guests, we have Dr. Bianca Van Kust from the HRH, uh, HRH Care, based out of Peekskill, a yes. pediatrician. Yes. Uh, we also have with me, of course, uh, President of the Yorktown Chamber of Commerce, my good friend and partner, uh, Sergio Esposito. Uh, so today's numbers, uh, just to go over them quickly, uh, we didn't get an update from the Department of Health, so we are still... We are still using yesterday's numbers. And yesterday, Yorktown had uh, 346 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Again, this is uh, a cumulative number of 346. That's an increase of 19 from the day before. So we still see the numbers continuing to go up, uh, although not nearly as drastically uh, as, uh, as before. Westchester, the number is now 23,803, which is an increase of 624. In New York State, the number is 242,786, which is an increase uh, of 6,054 from yesterday. For those who continue to uh, watch Governor Cuomo, uh, he was on again today. Uh, we believe for the time being, we are statistically at a, at a statistical plateau. Uh, I think we can all agree that has to do with the New York on pause order and the parameters that we've put in place both on the state, county, and local levels. And so I really want to thank the people of Yorktown uh, for doing such a tremendous job in flattening the curve. Uh, and it, the governor did sign a few additional orders uh, that went into effect, uh, the first one being the mask requirement that, was, that went into effect Friday at 8 p.m. So if you are going to be in a setting where you can't observe social distancing, meaning you can't be more like we are here, you can't be more than six feet apart, then you are now required by the state of New York to wear a mask. It can be one of the masks that we have, that we have here. And, and, and Tom, I'm here, and there's, I'm seeing some comments on Facebook that there's issues on the TV, just so you know. Uh, uh, so we, we, you can use the mask we have here. You can use a scarf, a cloth-covered mask. Uh, people have been getting pretty creative with them. I know, uh, Sergio, you've got, your, you've got your mask over there, sporting, sporting the Yanks. Go Yanks! Go Yanks. Hopefully we can be back in baseball season soon. Uh, so the mask requirement is, uh, is now in, in, in effect. Uh, we had a change, and I posted about this uh, both on social media and beyond. Uh, they did reverse, the state reversed its, its order regarding golf courts and marinas and, and uh, boating docks, uh, boating, excuse me, boat launches. Uh, they are now uh, able to operate and deemed essential. They are putting parameters in place uh, to adhere to social distancing. Uh, one of the things that they're doing is no, especially the golf, uh, golf courses, you, you can only walk. You can't be in a golf cart. 
um, but the state reversed uh, its course there. Um, I continue to receive questions about landscaping. So again, landscaping has been deemed an essential service for basic lawn care. So not uh, planting, not uh, redesigning your front lawn or your front yard or your, or your garden beds, but basic lawn service uh, is, 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 has been deemed an essential service by the town of, by, excuse me, by the state of New York. And we, uh, again, uh, encourage social distancing for all those companies for their workers. Marriages, uh, we can now, uh, thanks to the state of New York, perform marriages via Zoom. Uh, so we are, for those who were uh, planning a, a wedding this spring and this summer, uh, and, and, uh, and it continues, by the way, Tom, no, not up on Fios. Thank you, folks, for, for letting us know that. Uh, we, are, we are trying to work on, on the Fios program. Uh, but for, for marriages, uh, you can uh, contact the town clerk's office. They can still produce a uh, certificate, and we can still uh, perform wedding ceremonies. Uh, the town clerk and I are the, both the uh, wedding officers, marriage officers uh, for the town of Yorktown, and we actually are now able to perform uh, wedding services uh, remotely via Zoom. Uh, let's see. The uh, garbage pickup. Uh, continue to get questions about bulk pickup, about uh, leaf bags and stick bundles. Monday and Tuesday, R&R, &R, our refuse and recycling department, is going to continue with the leaf bag and stick bundles. So if you have them out there, they will be, pick they will be picked up. Uh, again, as a reminder, we are working at half of our staff. So less staff, but with everyone home, we're seeing a lot more, uh, obviously, garbage, and, and folks are getting to those, uh, those, those honeydew lists and, and uh, getting to things that they've been trying to do uh, for a long, long time. And so there's, a, there's an increase in volume. Uh, so that coupled with the, the decreased staff uh, is, taking thing, is making things take longer than they normally would. So we just ask for your understanding and patience. You can continue to call the Refuge Recycling Department. They are open. Our departments are open. So you can call them if you have any specific questions or jump on the YorktownNY.org website. Uh, our COVID-19 page continues to provide this information as it becomes readily available, um, and as well as the changes in the bulk pickup schedule as well. Our rec programs for the spring have officially been canceled. This is for the town of Yorktown. Um, I can't speak to the club sports. Um, I have been in touch with uh, the club sport presidents, and I know that they are. Uh, we're all working together on this, um, but the spring programs for the town of Yorktown have been canceled. If you did sign up for a spring program and you did submit a check, you will be fully reimbursed uh, and, our, and our staff is working on that as we speak. I wanna remind folks yet again, it was a beautiful day today. Uh, parks continue to be uh, uh, brought up to my office. Passive parks are open, so you can go on a hike. Uh, you can go to any of our, we've got 40 miles of hiking trails, nature preserves. Uh, you can go to any of our passive parks. Active parks remain closed. And those, as, uh, as defined, are parks, pools, playgrounds. I might say parks, I mean playgrounds, uh, sports fields. Uh, all of those items and all those, all those uh, uh, amenities for the town remain closed at this point in time. Uh, I enjoyed uh, earlier today spending some time at Sparkle Lake fishing with my family. Brought Charlie out there, uh, my four-year-old, and uh, we had a ball. So those just, that's just one thing that remains open uh, there were a lot of folks walking around, enjoying the trails, observing social distancing. If they couldn't observe social distancing, a lot of people, including us, had our masks, had our masks on. Uh, so just make sure you're making those uh, intelligent decisions when you are going out. And you know, if FDR Park remains open by the state of New York. The North County Trailway, which is overseen uh, by Westchester County, remains open. Um, if you're in any of those places again, and you can't maintain that six-foot distance from other people that's when the mask requirement kicks in. So make sure you have that mask on you, uh, and so this way you're not inadvertently, inadvertently uh, sharing any of your germs or, or receiving anyone else's germs. Um, and I understand, again, that the, that the, that the um, uh, North County Trailway is very popular. Uh, Bear, Mount, um, Bear Mountain, Bear Mountain is open, but Turkey Mountain, very popular. Uh, but remember, when you're going to these places, just because you're outside, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to maintain that six-foot distance. And we had uh, Dr. Michael Ford on um, uh, a week ago, and he was explaining that when you're exercising and you're breathing out 
it doesn't stay with that individual. So you're breathing it out and they're walking past it, but then the next person behind them are walking into it. So again, uh, if you're in these crowded areas, please uh, utilize those masks if you can't maintain that six foot distance. Our food pantries, uh, our food pantries need our help. Uh, I was over at St. Mary's Food Pantry in Mohegan Lake on Friday. They've seen a significant increase in clientele. They continue to serve on Saturday mornings between 8 and 11 a.m. Uh, they do that uh, as, a, as a curbside pickup where they drop it off into people's cars. Uh, but we are seeing an increase, uh, an increased need. And so if anyone willing and able, there's a drop box in front of uh, St. Mary's where you can donate any non-perishable food, and they check that box um, several times a day. Or you can go on their website, and there's a link on the town's Facebook page. Uh, if you go on the website, you can make a monetary donation. Uh, and uh, again, when I was there on Friday, uh, I was there with one of their board members, and, and she explained that they had to purchase a new, a new freezer because they had fully stocked uh, the freezer they had with goods and they had in, in, in anticipation of the need, and that need is there. So again, uh, please support our local food pantries uh, would be a great thing for, for our most vulnerable neighbors. And lastly, tax deadline. I have been getting a lot of questions about this. Uh, the Board of Legislators on Friday night, and we're going to have County Legislator Vidak Gashi join the town board meeting on Tuesday. Again, that's a, that's a Zoom meeting, a remote meeting. Uh, but the, the county legislators did pass a measure on Friday. It reduced the penalties for late payments. Um, so the tax deadline remains April 30th. That's the bottom line. Your tax deadline for the town of Yorktown remains April 30th. The town does not have the authority or ability to extend that date, we were, we were advocating for it. Uh, we thought that it was important, uh, but we're gonna institute whatever tax relief that we can get. Um, we continue to have conversations with the governor's office about this because I did reach out to the governor's office. There's a letter online that I wrote on behalf of the entire town board uh, asking for flexibility, just like your state and federal income taxes, which are now due on July 15th. Uh, but there is going, so right now, April 30th is the deadline. And if you pay in May, it's a, uh, it's a half a percent penalty. If you pay from June to July 15th, it's a 1% penalty. And then if you pay after July 15th, it would be your normal penalty and fee schedule. Uh, and with that being said, uh, we, do, we did get some questions um, that I know that we got, uh, I know that we got uh, earlier. Uh, one of the questions I received is about death counts. Um, right now in the town of Yorktown, uh, we don't receive an official notification uh, by the county or the Department of Health, either the county's Department of Health or the state's Department of Health on death count. Um, we are trying to, uh, and the town clerk's office gets notified when there's a death within our town. Um, so we're trying our best to pull that information together. We believe that number, that number is somewhere around 10, potentially. Um, we believe it's probably higher because if we have a, resident or a neighbor from the town of Yorktown uh, who unfortunately loses their battle with COVID-19 at Northern Westchester Hospital or Hudson Valley Hospital, that does not get reported to the clerk's office because it did not occur in the town of Yorktown. Um, so it continues to be a very serious situation. It continues to be something that uh, obviously we continue to provide information and be engaged on. Uh, and I think ultimately, and in, in, in Dr. Van Kust is, Van Kust is gonna speak about this, but it's about decisions, making the right decisions. And that's one of the things that we are trying to do is provide as much information to our residents so they can make the right decisions for their families, for themselves, but also for their neighbors and strangers. Um, and speaking of neighbors and, and, and speaking of strangers, I have to say, I've seen, and, and Sergio, you and I were talking about this, uh, I've seen quite the level of, I don't want to, it's not disrespect, but frustration uh, on social media, and it's being directed towards your fellow residents. I've seen it on some of the social media pages, some of the comments that on the town page, uh, and I just want to remind everybody that we're in this together, and I've said that before, I know everyone's frustrated, but we're all, we're all dealing with this, we're all dealing with the same situation, and now more than ever, we have to be good neighbors. We have to be compassionate. We have to be understanding. We have to be sensitive. Um, you know, this is taking its toll, and I understand that, and I recognize that, and everyone's dealing with it in different ways, but to 
to use the, the level of, of discourse that I've seen just today on social media, I think is, is, is we, we can be better. We can be better as a town. We can be better as a community. We can be better as neighbors. And so I just want to remind folks, again, I know it's frustrating. We all, we all want life to go back to the way it was. And we can have that debate about whether or not we're ever going to actually have life the way it was, and that's, and that's fine. But just remember that the people you're engaging with, whether it's online, whether it's, whether it's on a line at a grocery store, whether it's out in the public, just remember that they're facing the same stress and, and facing the same situation that you are. And so to take out your frustrations on your neighbor, we can do better. We know better. We can be better neighbors. And so this week, I really hope that the town of Yorktown and, and there's been tremendous support and people have gone above and beyond in so many ways. But let's remind each other, patience, compassion, understanding, and let's remind each other about the Yorktown way. And, and that's being there for each other during these, during these difficult times. And so um, with that being said, um, we're going to, I'm happy to start taking phone calls. If people want to uh, give us a call here, it's uh, 962-5722, extension 216. Again, it's 914-962-5722, extension 216. Uh, and we are getting some, some medical questions. And so, again, we have uh, Dr. Bianca Van Kust here. Um, and and, I, and I, you're over, over at, why don't you talk, tell us about HRH Care over in Peekskill and, okay. and what, your, what your practice focuses on. So HRH Care is on Main Street in Peekskill, and um, we see different types of patients. We see pediatric patients. We see adult patients. Um, and right now we're doing a lot of telemedicine mm -hmm. because we like people to stay at home as much as they can. Um, and we also do pop-up testing. So um, what, is, what is pop-up testing? Because one of the things, and I'm, great, I'm glad you brought it up, uh, one of the things that, that we've seen or, or, or that we've heard from is there's no – state-run testing site in northern Westchester. So what, is the, what would the difference between, be between a pop-up testing as, as you're providing in, in a situation like that, like we have in New Rochelle and Mount Vernon and Yonkers? Right. So on certain days, I know Monday and maybe Wednesday, we would have to call HRH Care and find out. They will put tents in the back okay. in the parking lot, and there's a number you call to set up an appointment. If okay. you have any symptoms of COVID-19, you can call. They will give you an appointment, and they will test you. Great. Also, Westchester Medical Center has the same situation where you can get tested in the parking lot. In the parking lot of Westchester Medical down in Valhalla, which is yeah. a lot closer than, than uh, going down to New Rochelle or Mount Vernon exactly. or, or Yonkers. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. So um, if anybody's concerned, they can always call HRH Care and get tested. Um, so I'm not here, um, you know, I haven't spoken to HRH Care about coming here. I just wanted to offer my services to Yorktown because I live in Yorktown. Well, we really appreciate it. Thank we you. We really do appreciate your, your insight. Uh, you know, we're, I've seen some questions on Facebook, um, and I don't know if, if uh, you're, you're comfortable commenting, but um, questions about statistics, uh, you know, accuracy of the counts, um, any thoughts or any insight that you can provide yes. on, on that? Yes. So the counts, um, you know, when somebody is admitted to the hospital with symptoms of COVID-19 and tested, we can say, okay, this person is is COVID positive or this person died from COVID disease. But there are many people who can't get tested right. and die at home or die in the hospital for due to other reasons like cardiac arrest or strokes right. Right. or renal failure that is also caused by COVID-19, but we're not tested for COVID-19. So the counts are not accurate okay. in terms that I think the counts are a lot higher. You do believe the counts are... Yes, okay. because um, COVID-19 causes so many different symptoms mm -hmm. and can cause death through many different ways that um, sometimes people are not tested for COVID-19. Yeah. Right. So I definitely, you know, from speaking to patients who have symptoms and speaking to friends who have symptoms and looking at the map of Westchester and the counts, I know that the counts are a lot higher than those maps suggest, yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah. um, because a lot of people are ill um, and a lot of people have passed away. Right. So I think the counts are higher. I know that when we were looking at, uh, at our counts in, in Yorktown, uh, originally, we, we expected to be at 4% of the, of the total uh, number, right? And so, you know, we're, we're over 20,000 now. 
Um, you know, at 4 percent, we'd be over 800. Uh, right now, we're at 346. So, right. you know, do you, so my question is, is that, a, is that indicative of us flattening the curve, or is that more to your point that we don't have a firm grasp on the, on the, on the true number, or is it both? <laughs> I think we're all flattening the curve because we've been staying at home for yeah. three weeks. So um, I think Yorktown has lower numbers because it's not as crowded. Mm -hmm. So places like Peekskill, Austin, and Croton are going to have higher numbers because people live closer together. Yep. Um, people may housing take density, right? housing density. People may take the train to work. Right. You also have to consider essential workers, the people working in the grocery stores, um, police officers. Um, depending on what population lives in your town, you will have higher numbers. I think Yorktown has a lower number because the houses are not as close to each other in most places. Right, right, yeah. Um, it's You can see it on the map, and I've been trying to share the map online whenever they present it, um, and we do, we do share that information and the counts. You can go on to, again, I want to just remind everyone, go to yorktownny.org, go on to the COVID-19 dashboard. Uh, you know, we have... And I'm going to pull it up right here. You know, we have a COVID-19 community impact dashboard that shows not just what our what our current number is right now. It's it needs to be updated. Um, it was last updated on the on the 15th, so we'll, we'll provide an update on that. But it also provides the map of of the rest of Westchester County, and so you can see Yorktown compared to Somers, Newcastle. But you know, to your point, Peekskill, Peekskill, the last time it was updated was at th you know 333. And and uh, and so with Peekskill, even though it's smaller, uh, has more has more cases in the town of Yorktown. And, and to your point, it's all about the structure of their housing. Correct. Interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. What about uh, and again for folks at home uh, who want to ask uh, Dr. Van Kust a question, you can dial us here at nine one four nine six two five seven two two extension two one six. Again, that's nine one four nine six two. 5722 extension 216 from your standpoint and what you're seeing how do you see this uh, impacting i've got two small kids so how do you see uh how do you see it impacting children versus uh older adults yeah so in my opinion if you're over 60 you know your risk is greater of getting very ill ending up in the hospital hospital or being intubated but children do really well with this disease children see a lot of colds throughout the year um, and this is just mostly another cold to them so they get some coughing some uh, with a little bit of a runny nose they get diarrhea vomiting belly pain mm -hmm. they may get rashes but they do pretty well um, very rarely do children end up in the hospital unless they have some underlying condition or sometimes we don't know why some children don't do well, but most children do well. Yeah. So when it comes to children, it's more to keep them away from your older family members because they will do well and they may spread it. Right. Um, compared to people older than, you know, 30s, 40s will have symptoms. People older than 60 can get very ill. No, that's the population that we've been, we've been focused on as a society is, is the folks over 60, anyone with, who's got a compromised immune system, underlying health issues. Right. Uh, that's where our focus has been right. to really protect that, you know, those demographics. Correct. Yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, again, so for anyone who wants to ask uh, Dr. Van Kust a question, 914-962-5722, extension 216. Sergio, are you on the Facebook page? I, I, I don't know if we're getting – usually Councilman Lachterman's here, so we usually get questions. I'm, uh, I'm looking at questions. Do you I have any Facebook questions page. that uh, are, are popping up? Uh, not that I see right now. I did post uh, our phone number. Actually, I got the extension wrong, so it's 216. 216 so. is, the, is the extension for Town Hall. Uh, so anyone can um, can call us here and ask. If you do have any questions, uh, you can you can just call right here. In the meantime, um, we're going to continue. Uh, Sergio, why don't we talk about what's going on at the chamber uh, and some of the things that we're talking about with small businesses? Obviously, reopening is uh, is something that we're we're the whole I think society is just you know thirsty for. But if you know, and I think. Doc, I think you can comment on this as well quickly, is doing it the right way. Because we've seen in other countries who went back too fast, 
you saw that rebound and that spike. Second spike, and yeah. So, and, so, and that's something that the governor continues to talk about, and, right. and, I, and I want to thank him again for his, his leadership during this time. But what, that's what we're guarding against right now. So we're, we're protecting, protecting those core groups, our, our, our residents over 60, immunocompromised, underlying health issues. But now, as a society, we're also trying to protect against coming back too quickly, which all the, mo all the models show, if you come back too fast, you're going to just, again, because we're not going down, we're plateauing. Right. So we're not going down, but if you come back too fast, we're going to shoot up to, the next, to that next level. Yeah, so it's very important to see a decrease in the um, spread, spreading rate, the infectious rate, to show that the virus is dying down. If we open up too quickly, then everyone who's getting sick right now, which is still more than we'd like, mm -hmm. would be spreading it to people who would otherwise be staying at home. Right. Um, so we have to see a decrease in the new infections to a certain point before we can open up and, you know, allow the public to be together. Right. Because, you know, your job and our job as physicians is to make sure the public is healthy. Um, we can always come back when everybody is doing well, but if we come back too soon, then we'll do worse, and it will be worse for the economy if we have an unhealthy public. Right. So we're stuck between, you know, two very difficult decisions of opening up and having a great economy, but... If your public is not healthy, you won't have a great economy either. So, unfortunately, we have to do this. We have no other choice. And it's not only that you're going to have not just the impact on the economy, but you're you're putting lives at risk. Right, right. It's really because you're seeing we're seeing that death count. I mean, I think we're up to over thirteen thousand in the state of New York right now. Um, so you're seeing that death count continue to rise, and and you're and if you allow us to come back too fast and we rebound. And we go back up to that, and, and I was watching the governor's presentation. It's a difference between 1.2 and 0.9. If we're back at that 0.9 level, you're going to see you're going to see even more people get sick, and even more people, unfortunately, pass away because of this. Yeah. So, but in the but in the meantime, Serge, yes, sir. There, it is important for us to set the table, so that right, so that w when when we do get to the point where the valve is starting to turn back on. And I, I think it's going to be phased. That's just my personal opinion. No facts there. Personal opinion. I think it's going to be, a, you know, as we went to a full 100%, I think we're going to see the reverse. But as you, as you start to go down that road, and, and, and again, the White House, uh, I read the White House's uh, plan as well. It's a three-phase plan that they're, that, that they're discussing as well. Um, but it's important for the table to be set and important for the town, right, to – be in a position where once we're once that train starts to move, that we can get behind it and push as hard as we can and get our businesses back up and running and provide that next level of support. And that's, that's why correct. we started that Reboot Yorktown Task Force to really hone in on life specifically after the coronavirus. That's correct. And, um, you know, it is it is a, a very difficult decision um, on on the one side, on the other side, um, what I'm hearing is that just people don't have um, enough money at this point. They're they're already out of money, um, and they're afraid for their livelihood as well. So it, yeah. it's uh, it's really a horrible uh, place. Um, you know, it's a rock and a hard place, uh, and and it's just uh, it's difficult. Yeah, the White House put out uh, guidelines uh, to phase the economy back in. And I think the first guideline uh, to get to to get to the first level, I believe, you have to see a steady 14-day decrease, which is I think along the lines of what the doc yep. is recommending as well here. Um, and then and then you could actually get to phase one, right? Yep. That that that's to get to phase one, and then right. phase one will be some kind of gradual opening, and and it's going to be different for um, I I think something like that should go county by county, state by state. Town by town, you know, I mean, it's that difficult. And you also have to account for, you know, uh, fight or flight, right? Because people will say, okay, uh, if it's close enough, I'm just going to head up over there and enjoy a drink or something to eat at a restaurant that's open over there, but maybe not over here. So, you know, it's it's really a tough, uh, a tough thing to manage. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that um, things are trending, at least uh, today, in the right direction. Um, you know, especially for New York. So uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Um, you know, at this point, um, 
you know, what we're still hoping that uh, funding comes in for our businesses. Um, the, as everyone knows and as everybody's aware, the, the Paycheck Protection Program ran out of money the other day. Um, to be quite honest, uh, I put my, uh, my loan application in for my business uh, almost immediately, and uh, I, wasn't, uh, I didn't receive any funding either. So I'm hoping that um, the, the, uh, the folks in Washington, um, you know, get it together and come to some kind of an agreement. Uh, you know, I'm not playing politics on this one. I really don't, it really, it doesn't matter to me. What, what has to happen is an agreement has to be set where everybody is happy. And, you know, I always say an agreement, um, a good agreement means that not everybody walks away 100% right. content. Right. I'm just going to take this one phone call. Yes, sir. Oh, oh they hung up. All right, we missed him. So uh, it ter turns out that the phone was not actually uh, working properly. But again, 914-962-5722, uh, extension 216. Uh, the phone is on. Uh, so 91496, <laughs> there we go. Town Hall, this is Supervisor Slater. I'm good, Mr. Copstein. How you doing? Yes, sir. Yes. Correct. Yes. So the question is: Is the county? What is the? Well, excuse me. What is the town responsible for uh, in regards to taxes to the county? The, the town is still on the hook to give the to send the ta uh, the, the county twelve million dollars. Uh, that's part of the. That's the county tax warrant. Twelve million dollars, uh, and I believe that is on May twenty sixth. That is the due date. Uh, that the town has to cut a check to the county. So even though the county did provide uh, uh, some, some form of relief, the relief that I was hoping for and that I continued to, to, to chirp about is the $12 million tax because we do a 60-40 split. We pay 60% in May, 40% in the fall, and I, uh, I thought we should, they should have flipped it. But the county, as you know, Mr. Kopstein, is in equally as poor you know, financial shape right now. The county executive... Uh, is talking about significant. No, the town did not. No, the town did not get a break. Thank you, Mr. Copstein. Stay well. Bye bye. That was a good question about taxes. Good question about taxes. So again, nine one four nine six two five seven two two extension two one six. You know, and I just want to talk a little bit more about what Mr. Copstein was just saying. So in, in in Westchester County, the towns collect the taxes. We collect the taxes and give them out to all the all the special districts, to uh, to the to the county, to the school districts. So when people pay their school taxes, they come here. I'm sure, as you know, uh, you pay your school taxes that, and you you come here. But the town isn't is just collecting that money and, and it's a pass through uh, to the schools. So in this case, the the town collects the county's taxes. There is a 12 million dollar tax warrant to the county due May 26th that, that has not been alleviated uh, by Westchester County. Town Hall, Supervisor Slater. Yes. Sure. Sure. So, so um, uh, Dr. Van Kust had just uh, talked. We just talked about this about the infl about the inflation of the of the numbers. Right. Um, so, if, could you provide one more time insight? If you could, and just speak up a little bit more, I think that would be very helpful. Okay. So, and Dr. Van Kust is going to answer your question right now. Thank you very much. Yeah. So again, going back to the uh, numbers because there are reports out there that the numbers aren't in fact accurate. So how? So can you one more yes. time just speak to so that? So I know that New York City added, um, I think, three thousand debts to their their numbers recently. So as I said before, we know who is COVID positive and admit it in the hospital. And when a person passes that's COVID positive, we count those numbers. But there are many patients dying due to COVID that have not been tested or die in their own homes. So those numbers are not taken down. Right. And we should expect that the numbers are higher. And we may never know the oh, true sure. number because we cannot 
say for sure somebody passed from COVID right. if they had a stroke. Right. So COVID can cause strokes, heart attack, kidney failure. A lot of older people just pass out. Um, they seem to just get um, like they 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 don't know where they are, and they can't speak or they pass out or they just die in their home and you know we don't know for sure right. if it's so that's COVID. On the, and that's on the death count specifically and then on, a, on the positive cases it comes yeah. down to testing it comes down to testing and unfortunately testing is very difficult to do we need a special reagent that is globally very hard to get mm-hmm. every country is looking for this reagent to do testing and we don't have enough so Therefore, we can't test everyone we want to. And a lot of times we'll have people who have classic COVID symptoms and we still won't test them because they're not at a high-risk group. So you'll have a 30-year-old with cough and shortness of breath, maybe a pulse ox of 92, but you know that that patient will do fine and you may not test that patient because you want to test an older patient who needs to be admitted to the hospital. So we know we're not doing enough testing and it's not, you know, the governors are fighting with the president over over this, but honestly, I think no one has the power to create this reagent, so it's not really anybody's fault um, that we can't test everyone that needs to be tested. But the governor, yeah, but the governor said um, today that he will start doing the antibody testing, right. which is a blood test, and for that test, hopefully, we are not short on the reagents, or you know, we can get. Can you explain to folks at home uh, what the antibody test? We've been hearing this a lot. Yes. You know, when are we going to have the antibody test and, and why is that so? Can you explain what that is and why it's so important okay. in this situation? So I will explain the difference. Um, so the test to see if you have the infection in your nasal pharynx where they put the Q-tip in the back of right. your, your... That's the COVID-19 test. test. That's actually sampling to get DNA or RNA material and then put that through a process to amplify the DNA and RNA and see that you actually have... Um, the virus inside, you know, your, your, your nasal pharynx. The antibody test will be a blood test where they will pick, they'll prick your finger and they'll take a little bit of blood and we will see within your blood if your body has responded to the virus. So when we get a By virus... Responding, you're saying basically you fought it off. Right. So there are two different ways we look at it. When you get a virus, any virus, initially your body will fight it. Mm-hmm. And it will create something called IgM. Mm-hmm. That means the IgM um, protein in your body means you're actively fighting off the virus. So if you have the virus at that time, you will be IgM positive. If you have fought the virus and your body is healing, you will also have something called IgG in your blood. So when you do the antibody test, you're looking for two different antibodies. The IgM antibody, that means you currently have an infection, or the IgG antibody, which means you are fighting off your infection and you're getting better. So what we can do with this type of test is test more people and see who has fought it off and is already has antibody towards it and hopefully won't get the same strain of this disease, and who is actively fighting an infection even though they may not have symptoms. Right. right, because some studies say that up to 50% of people with COVID-19 do not show symptoms. So it's a much better test in terms of figuring out what's going on in our population wow. and opening up, you know, our stores and opening up the government. And I know that the blood, and, and Sergio, I'm going to come back to you. I'm not leaving you out. This is, this is really great. Um, I know that the New York Blood Center is, a, is asking folks who have convalesced, right, who've recovered, to donate their plasma. Does the antibody test, how do, how do, you, how do you match the antibody test with the plasma? So if I, if, if I had the antibody test and I recovered, would my next step be to go donate plas- the, the, my plasma? If you would like to, you, if you have recovered, probably one of the tests they use to see if you have recovered is the IgG. Right. And so when they take your plasma, they take those antibodies to help, you know, fight the virus, and they can give it to other people. They, so basically they're going to take my, if, hypothetically, they take my plasma, and then someone who's in the hospital... Who, who's having a hard time fighting the virus off, they can give the, my plasma to that individual just like a blood donation. Correct. And then that's going to help them. Fight it off. Boost their immune and helps them f- 
fight exactly. Fight it off. It's kind of like your body creates soldiers in a war. Yeah. So the virus is attacking you. You have your initial soldiers. The IgM mm -hmm. comes out, is fighting the virus, and then once the I, once you win the fight, you create IgG, and now you have the IgG in your body forever. Although in certain viruses, they say maybe not as long as we would like to. Right. Um, so you can take these soldiers and give your soldiers to somebody else to help them fight in their war against the virus. Um, so that's how the plasma donation works. And so well, right we now had a, we had a question, uh, actually two questions. One, um, I guess it could be directed to uh, uh, the both of you, um, was uh, how many do we actually have um, a, a number of people that actually recovered? Uh, since we're on the topic of that. So is there a number out there of people that actually have had uh, COVID-19 and recovered? Yeah, on the website, um, and um, Governor Cuomo talks about this in his daily speeches where he talks about how many deaths right. and how many have left the hospital. And, you know, the number that has less th left the hospital is like 63,000 that we know of. But you have to understand there's many more people out in our communities fighting COVID-19 at home. And some have recovered. I've had patients who I spoke through over the phone who were doing pretty bad and now have recovered. So a lot of people have recovered. So, and then the next question, and, and it's, it's a question that I've always thought about, is, is it, it, do we expect COVID-19 to be uh, sort of like the flu in terms of it being seasonal? Like, could we be coming out of the season, hence, you know, the uh, drop in numbers? Is, yeah. is that possible? So, so there is a possibility that this is an annual occurrence. But I think that is not likely because we've had coronaviruses over the years come out, be very dangerous, um, people die, and then it never comes back. For example, SARS, COVID-1, right. we had MERS. Right. So, um, you know, the way things seem to work in, in this world is that every now and then we get a very dangerous bacteria or virus that becomes a pandemic and, um, you know, something that we actually have to stop. Hopefully, this is not going to happen every year. Hopefully, we will continue what has happened in the past, that maybe every 100 years we get a very dangerous virus. But, you know, it could come back next year, but right. it's very unlikely. Right. And, but, but if it does, you have the antibody test by that point. Well right. In play. We would be prepared. You would be more prepared. You probably, at that point, you'd have some type of vaccine. Yes. That we would hopefully, I mean, because, again, I think, I think the p thing that people... Maybe they, I don't know if they don't understand or it's not being properly communicated, but, and I, but I think you hit it on it earlier. It's, it's the volume that we need things at. And so we, ju we simply don't have enough volume to test the 360 million Americans across the country. Just, right. Right? And, and, so and unfortunately, I think we depend on other countries for a lot of things that um, we should think about in the future, you know, being able to make at home. Right being yes. able to make here. Because when something goes on in the world and everybody wants the product, if I'm making it and I want to protect my people, I'm not going to sell it to you. Right. right. So we have to think about that too. But it's definitely the quantity that we need throughout the world that makes it hard to get you know, these tests and to get the PPE the doctors need. Um, but we should be a little bit more self-sufficient in creating that stuff for ourselves. Yeah, and hope, and I think yeah, that's a great comment. That's a great point. Yeah. Absolutely. You're absolutely right because, I mean, we're not talking about just the United States here. We're talking about <laughs> pretty much every country. Correct. And, uh, and everybody's scrambling for, you know, a very limited supply. Yeah, you know. yeah. Serge, let's, uh, let, let's go back to businesses if we can. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of questions about um, – a lot of questions about – the PPP, um, I spoke with, and, and you and I, you were very helpful. You know, we spoke with several small businesses uh, over the weekend, folks who had questions about their application. Is there, you know, because right now, let's, let's just start with the PPP is now zero. They have no more money. That's correct. The federal yeah. government has to replenish that fund. That's correct. And so the question, I got a couple of questions, and, and, and you were very helpful. If you had filled out an application and submitted it and didn't hear back, what happens to that application? 
So your application is in process, um, and I actually I got <laughs> after you, you we spoke, um, uh, I actually got an email from my bank, and they said that I'm in uh, stage two, which is uh, payroll uh, verification or something like that, and then and then it goes to stage three, which is uh, SBA funding, SBA approval, and then stage four, I believe, is act, the actual virtual closing. Um, so I am, uh, I am in stage two, which means I'm kind of out of luck right now. Um, we did put an application in with the chamber. The chamber is in the same, um, in right. the same boat. Right. Um, so, so your application is still in process. The idea behind it is, is that once uh, new funding comes in and I hear that they're very close, uh, from yeah, what I saw, I that, I saw today. that as well. Yep. Uh, so hopefully that happens. For an extra 250 billion of funding, your application will continue. I think part of your question uh, this weekend was, "What happens if you haven't applied yet?" Right. That was the next. That was my next one. Are they going to have the same application process? Do we know yet, or is it going to be a different application process? So right now, it's going to be the same application. But okay. I will tell you that I applied with the with with an application that I received from the bank, and then I got a call saying we just need you to refill out the application on the new application. So which is but it's a quick application. It was easy. So the answer right now um is yes it's gonna be the same application. The answer tomorrow, this is such a fluid thing. It might be that they come out with a different again, quick app right. that that might have an extra question on it or something. But I'm not sure. Right now, moving forward it's going have to those. be the same application. Okay. If you haven't put your application in yet you cannot put your application right. in now. Right. That was the other point. That, that's something that we, we researched and found out as well this weekend. That's correct. The other, the other thing I'd like to mention uh, for people is um, the, the, there's the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. It's called the PUA, and it's connected to a different uh, program um, in the CARES Act. And that's that extra $600 that, 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 uh, that we've been talking about with unemployment. Um, and so you want to make sure you fill out the PUA part if you are heading toward unemployment, the unemployment line, um, just so you get that. The, the PUA program also allows you to, uh, to file for unemployment if you ordinarily would not have been qualified. If you uh, have uh, minimal income uh, from your business or you just started and you haven't, been, you haven't fulfilled the 18-month requirement. So that's what the PUA is. So if you see that when... If you're if you're filling out the app online, you definitely want to fill that portion in because that expands your quali the quali qualifications to actually apply for it and get it, and it also expands the amount of money you will be getting yeah. um, if if you're approved, yeah. right? Yeah, I, you know I think a lot of it comes down to the federal government. I think that's everyone's just you know I can I can tell you that uh, I was on a conference call uh, at the end of last weekend. Uh, and I was, I was reading some stuff from the Association of Towns, 933 towns in the state of New York, only two qualify for federal funding. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. You know, and I know that there's a resolution that's on the agenda for, for Tuesday night uh, that, that hopefully the board is going to support. But it, it's, it's not just a bit, it's businesses, and, and I'm with, so I fully support that. But local government and county government are being left out in the cold. Yes, and, they are. And... And at the end, and unfortunately, what I'm afraid is going to happen, though, is if, is if they don't get the support they need from the federal government, where do they go? There's only one place that they go to get more revenue. And that's your pocket. And that's your pocket. And that's my pocket. I mean, that's so you're going to get whacked again. Yeah. And let me tell you, people's pockets are empty right now. The, so. Credit cards max. People's pockets are very empty, you know. And so hopefully the federal government not only replenishes uh you know the 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 ppp program but hopefully they also recognize uh, and i know the governor's been talking about this as well but i think he's right hopefully they recognize you know our counties and our state and our and our local governments i mean i think that's really important the rock and the hard place is that there are you know 52 million businesses small businesses you know uh, in the united states and and i believe my number is accurate or no it counts for 52 percent or something like that Anyway, there, there's, there's absolutely no way that our federal government or our state governments are going to have enough money for no. everybody. No. For, you, know, you, you just can't print that much money. I know we're the richest country in the world, 
and and all of that. But there's just no, absolutely no way. And that's that rock and a hard place, right? The rock and the hard place is you got to contend with people's lives and the virus, and we got to get this virus behind us. Um, and you also got to contend with people just being flat out broke. Most people, they don't have enough money to last a week, let alone a month right. or three months. And, right. and it's just such a hard place to be in. Right. You know, but if anyone has questions for, for Sergio uh, about a small business issue or if you have questions for for uh, for Dr. Van Kust uh, regarding any uh, any questions about COVID-19, anything on the medical side, you can call us right here. 914-962-5722 extension 216. That's 914-962-5722 extension 216. We all we are also live on Facebook, uh, so you can post your question right on our Facebook page. And we can get you an answer as well. I'm, I'm sorry, doctor. You were going to say something? Yes. Um, I was just going to uh, say that, you know, we can either go back to opening, you know, the state and have many people die and still be in a recession for probably longer. Or we can try to stay home, get through this so that we can build again, because we're going to have to build from the bottom up again. And we have done that in the past, and it will happen again. You just have to decide how many people do you want to start building with. Do you want to, you know, start building with most of your population? Or do you want to lose enough people to build with a smaller population? All right. About the, um, uh, just to touch, you got a call. Supervisor Slater. Ah, uh, again, the president's on again. <laughs> he always does this to me. He knows you're on, that's why. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for letting me know. Goodbye. But going back to the town. I guess the um, president's on. He always copies me. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we, we gotta, we gotta, we'll put a call in. Uh, but going back to the town and being ready. Um, we do have the Reboot Yorktown. I believe we have our first meeting. Um, Monday, on, Well, it's not our first meeting. We had a preliminary meeting. Uh, I, I think you put together a great team. I, I, from what I understand, there's, what, 11 or 12 yeah. uh, individuals and uh, business. Uh, just it's, it looks like it's a great team. I'm looking forward to the meeting. Um, right now in town, the governor did pass this uh, the mask law that you have to wear a mask. Uh, of course, the law was qualified with if social distancing wasn't um, uh, uh, possible. But what's that, what that's being translated into, and I want to let everybody know out there, is you should walk around with a mask, bring a mask, have it in your car, because a lot of businesses, depending, some businesses are, are, are restricting people in and requiring masks with, in their busy times because they know that social distancing is impossible. Uh, that's that six to ten feet thing, right? Right, and and some businesses are just saying if you don't come in with a mask and gloves, you're not coming in with a mask and gloves. So save a trip, have a mask. I have mine in my little baggie, right? I have it in my car. I get out of my car, I put my mask on, I go, I buy my groceries, I buy whatever I need. I'm out the door, and then um, and and I know that I I'm not wasting a trip down to the store. So just be aware of that. Um, so this way, Hall, you can still later. support our businesses um, and get what you need. Oh, you're welcome. She, she's providing great information. You're, you. They're singing your praises, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Well, that's why we try to be, she's, you know, she's a neighbor of York. She lives in Yorktown, one of our residents, and we're just, we're thrilled to have her to provide the information that she is. Do you have a specific question that you want me to ask her? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much. You have a great night. Stay safe. Bye-bye. She was just singing your praises. They just wanted to say thank you. Just called thank to say you. thank you and, and the information that you're providing uh, again, 914-962-5722, uh, extension 216. I'm sorry, I just missed someone's call. That's 962-5722, extension 216. But just the, hearing the information you're, you're providing tonight is helping a lot of our residents and a lot of your neighbors because you live in Yorktown. Yes. And that's what this is about is just trying to 
give information to the public so they can make the best decisions for, the, for themselves, their families, their neighbors, uh, and their loved ones, and, their, and, and strangers, to make sure that we're yes. protecting as many people as we can. Sergio, you talked about the stores. I know that um, our legal team is working on uh, additional guidance for our stores in regards to the mask, because I, I, I did speak to the governor's office uh, over the, uh, on Friday, and it's exactly what you said. It's all about the time. And so if they can't maintain social distancing, then they're required to make sure that people have a mask. But if it's at 10 o'clock at night in Lowe's and you can maintain six feet, then they're saying, so we're trying to provide that guidance. Yeah, so I would, I, I, again, I well, apologize. Again, 962-5722, extension 216. I promise I'll, I'll pick it up. 962-5722, extension 216. So what I'm asking our business, our, our, our citizens, though, is... You know, if let's say hypothetically Lowe's decides that they're just going to require a mask. Don't get frustrated. Don't get upset. Have your baggie handy with your mask in it. Exactly. Put your mask on. Go Count inside. All later. Let's all kind of, you know, just stay calm sure. and carry on. Sure. Doc? I want to add to that. So some studies show that if somebody coughs or sneezes in the air, that the virus can hang around in the air for up to three hours. Sure. No problem. So I will never speak to that right now. Thank if you very much. I would recommend that people wear their mask because if somebody went into that store or coughed or sneezed, if they were wearing a mask, it would protect you. But if they were not because they decide it's 9 o'clock at night and they don't need a mask and they cough accidentally or sneeze, that virus is in the air for yeah. three hours. So for your own protection, I would still wear a mask. I and I would say wear a mask to protect your neighbors and people around you and also to protect yourself. It works both ways. So protect yourself by wearing the mask. And hopefully if everyone wears their mask and we open up our stores, we have low numbers of transmission, we could continue to be free. But if we stop wearing our mask, then we might have a second lockdown and we don't want that. Right. So I would recommend you wear it. Thank you, Doc. And speaking of masks, this was the call that I just got. Can you hold up your, your bag? Caller is asking if putting it in a plastic bag, there, it, it, concern was that there could be germs that is now being put in the bag. Can you, can you discuss that a little bit? Yeah. Not, to, not to put you on the spot there, buddy. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a cloth mask, you could iron it. If you iron it, you kill the virus. Oh, great. By ironing the mask, you kill the virus. Yes. Great. But what about storing it in, um, in a bag like that? What would so you recommend? So we recommend a paper bag because we know the virus um, dies quicker in paper bags. So doctors are being told to store their face masks in paper bags. Paper bags. Um, so that's better. But if you wear your mask, I would say clean it every day because if the virus, you know, you're breathing in the virus, the mask stops it. Right. Or you're coughing and the mask stops it. You do want to clean it. Yep. The thing is, if it's yours, you know, you keep wearing it. If, you, if you're COVID negative, but you got some... DNA or COVID virus on your mask, you, you, you want to iron it so that you don't touch it again and it transferred to your and, hands. And that's a big concern. Or wash it. Or yeah. wash it. And that's a big concern, I mean, uh, for, uh, for a lot of people. They say that now they, they're wearing that, they have, they, they're having to put a mask on and they don't have a problem with it, but they're having to put their hands closer to their face where they ordinarily would keep their hands away from their face. I, uh, I just didn't feel like throwing the mask into my pocket or on my front seat of my car was more yeah. sanitary. Exactly. You know, so a that bag more sanitary. Like I, I'm, I'll be honest. Like I, I have one mask and I try to, I try to reuse it quite frankly, because they're, they're limited in supply. So I, I'll probably use the same mask for like two or three days. And I, and I just leave it in my car. Is it better to do uh, what Sergio was doing with the bag? Okay. If Sergio washes his hands, with alcohol-based sanitizer before he takes it off, then we know that his face is clean, the mask is clean, his hands are clean, and then he can put it in um, a plastic bag or a paper bag. The other thing you can do is you can, yes. Oh, this is in my other pocket. I've got, yes. I've, got, I've got three <laughs> bottles in the cup holders of my car. Right, right. So the other thing you can do is have uh, seven different bags for the seven different days of the week. Mark 
the 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 day on the bag and every day when you take that mask off put it in monday's bag and don't use monday's bag for another week Got so it. the so virus dies, dies right, right. Ah, so when you really use good. monday again it is clean so you have clean. different days ah, really that good. way you don't wear the same mask several days in a row okay. in case you know you Got did it. have some virus on your mask that's oh wow that's great uh we do have a comment on facebook uh, regarding lows yep. um uh which is perfect because I want to remind everybody, littering is against the law. We have doubled the penalty for littering. It's $1,000 if you are caught littering. Our code enforcement is out enforcing this law because for people to discard their masks or their gloves in public places uh, is, is frankly disgusting. I mean, it's, it's, it's medical waste uh, and you're endangering a lot of people. Um, but we are hoping, um, and again, we're working with our legal department on guidance um, about how our stores, our grocery stores and places like Lowe's can, can institute uh, the, the governor's order. Um, obviously, we, we are discussing additional, requiring additional trash cans to help cut down on litter um, because, again, the masks and the, discarding the masks and the, and, and the gloves in public places, uh, there, there's no, we just have zero tolerance for it as a community just zero tolerance and so uh, we are investing in additional litter cameras as well um, we continue to do that working with our code enforcement um, so we we are trying our best to crack down uh, on folks who continue to frankly be irresponsible and toss away their gloves and masks in public places one of the questions that I also uh, you, you talked about cleaning the mask other than ironing can you just throw it in the washing machine yes you can wash it with soap wash it don't put it in the washing machine you can put it, wash it with soap. If it's if it's a cloth mask, you can wash it. You can put it in the washing machine. Okay. Yeah, I and mean you wouldn't, but you wouldn't do. Just no. to make sure I'm clear. Just to make no. sure I'm clear. Everyone home, I wouldn't do this. But yeah, once your surgical mask or your procedure mask gets wet, it's considered you, you soiled. Can't, you can't soiled, and you yeah. can't use okay. it. Perfect. So great. Again, nine one four nine six two five seven two two extension two one six. We're we're going to be here for just a few more minutes. Uh, I'm I'm thrilled, absolutely thrilled to have. Uh, Dr. Bianca Van Kust with us from HRH Care out of Peekskill, just providing incredible information for our residents at home. A Yorktown resident herself, uh, yes. and and just emailed me out of the blue, offering her assistance tonight. And I just can't thank you, can't thank you enough. And and for our, anyone who's uh, got concerns about uh, their small business uh, or you know their PPP. Uh, any questions that can be directed to the Chamber of Commerce? We have President Sergio Esposito here. Uh, who can provide answers as well. Again, that's 914-962-5722, extension 216. I think one of the things I want to go back to, though, is, is uh, Doc, you talked about being more self-sufficient and uh, as a society. And, and it's, it just struck something with me because this is something that I'm talking about with Sergio, I'm talking about with uh, our task force tomorrow. And I think you, you, you started to talk about it a little bit. The post-coronavirus life is going to be is going to be different. We all know that, right? So I'm I'm just an optimist by fault. I mean, I always try to look at the positive things, and I, I see it as an opportunity, in a lot of ways, for us to accomplish what you talked about: be more self-sufficient, but also specifically for the town of Yorktown. This is what you and I continue to talk about: is reimagining specific parts of our town, and what is your how is Yorktown going to prepare itself? for this next phase that our society is going, is going to be entering. Uh, and, and so whether it's, you know, finding ways to be more aggressive in, uh, in, in partnering with our, our, our colleagues in government to bring, you know, uh, and I've said this before, but smart tech here to Yorktown, biotech here to Yorktown, uh, you know, places like Regeneron are only a few miles away from us. Uh, so helping to attract those kind of businesses, which you know are good paying jobs, uh, I think that's where we're gonna be shifting to, in a sense. Yeah, uh, we should keep our jobs in the United States. Right. And we, we should, um, we, we buy too much from outside. Yeah. And things like, um, things that are necessary, like medical equipment, um, 
um, testing reagents. Those are the kind of things we have to make sure that we will never have to depend on another country for. Exactly. Um, you know, things that you don't necessarily need, uh, you know, like beauty supplies, fine. But things that are very necessary, especially medically, that are, you know, our people need, may need, sh we should be able to make that here. You should yeah. keep it at home. So we got a question. Um, and I'm, uh, Mr. Supervisor, I'm very optimistic as well. And, um, you know, uh, I see us getting back to, um, you know, a normal that is close to what we are all used to because this has happened in the past. And, right. you know, we're the United States and we're going to come up with this. I'm going to come out strong. Stronger. Uh, stronger. Strong. Well, that's the key. I agree with you, Serge. I do. I do. But I think we're going to come back stronger. Absolutely. In a lot of different ways. And so I see everything. I try to find the opportunity in everything. And I think there's going to be some real opportunities that emerge, emerge from this a lot. And that, again, going back to what uh, Dr. Van Kust is, is talking about, bringing those products, the manufacturing of those products that we rely so heavily on, bringing them back here. And I don't know, maybe we find a way to have a company in Yorktown who who deals you know what i'm trying to say like, be, I'm, there, I'm there's, just, there's just a lot Sign of opportunity <laughs> it's almost like a blank a blank canvas in a, in a lot of ways yeah yeah it's a great way to rebuild so that's how so i agree with you it's it's we're gonna we're gonna be but we're not just coming back strong come back stronger beautiful yeah. for Can example to God's ears? but the question doc i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off but the question is from our uh councilman ed lackerman he wants to know can you spread and i had this question too it's funny we're all thinking the same thing you know can you spray a mask with Lysol? Can you spray one of these? He asked about the surgical mask. Can yeah. you spray one of these with Lysol and reuse it? Well, anything. So, can, you, can you spray Lysol and put it, I mean, maybe let it dry out and then yes. put it next to your face? So I mean, a cloth mask, I imagine, you can spray with Lysol and let it dry. But I would recommend ironing it. Ironing it. I ironing, yeah. <laughs> ironing it because um, the Lysol drops. When you spray something, you see the drops collect on the surface. It doesn't cover every space, gotcha. right? You have to wipe it. So a uh, smooth surface you can spray and wipe, but a cloth mask is difficult to wipe. So I would recommend it be ironed or either put in the washing machine, wash with soap and water. But I think the question is more, um, you know, can you, can you spray Lysol and then even you let it dry for five days, let's say, put it, put it next to, put that thing, what the item, the, whatever it is. In this case, it's a mask on your face and it's, is it safe to... Because, I mean, I don't know. I think that's what yeah. the question is more directly. Yeah, I would not recommend doing that um, because I can't say that every part of the mask will be sanitized. Yeah, and if you sense. if you spray Lysol on a surgical mask or a N95 mask, it would get wet. And according to the company, once it's soiled, once it's wet, it doesn't work as well. Right. So that's why I would not recommend it. Okay. Great. Well, Dr. Dr. Van Kuss, I cannot thank you enough. You, you You're really welcome. did provide so much information for the folks at home. Again, uh, we do this to provide accurate and valid information so people at home can make the best decisions uh, that are going to have a positive impact on, on themselves, on their family, on their loved ones, on their neighbors. Um, and El Presidente, Sergio, always great having you here. Thank you for really the really appreciate all your help and advocacy for our, our, our business community. Uh, the things that you guys are, con are continuing to do over at the Chamber are tremendous. I'm very excited for the Reboot Yorktown Task Force tomorrow, uh, which you and the YSBA and, and so many others are, are a part of. Uh, and we will pr report back, hopefully, uh, with, with some positive ideas that we're going to implement to set the table for Yorktown. Again, I'm like you. I'm incredibly optimistic. Uh, it's a very challenging time, but I see opportunity. I see opportunity for this town to really excel and, and, and hit and frankly, throttle and get us moving into a you know, warp speed direction in, in a very positive way. When it's safe, when, when it's, it's absolutely safe, 100%. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, hosting with the town a uh, parade for all our heroes. Yep, um, our hometown and, heroes. Uh, when, yep. when it's safe. But uh, I'm, I already got that platinum plan in the back of my head. Well, I can't wait. I Dreaming can't about wait. it. Well, again, to you both, <laughs> thank Better you days. so much for being here. Thank You're you so welcome. much for your help and uh, and sharing your knowledge with our, our neighbors and for everyone at home again as always uh be safe be healthy make the right choices for this town and we'll get through this as quickly as we can we'll be back uh, with more information as it becomes readily available in the meantime have a great week and we'll see you soon thanks so much